you might be considering olt.com to file your 2020 tax return. This year, they improved their navigation and kept their pricing low. However, it's still very confusing to use. In this video, I'm going to be discussing why we don't recommend olt.com in this complete review and walkthrough. Hey guys, it's Justine with the College Investor Investing and Personal Finance for Millennials. We are going to be talking about olt.com today and why it's just not a favorite among tax software and why we don't recommend it. So your first question might be, is it free to file your tax return using olt.com? Yes, it really is free to file your tax return using olt.com, regardless of your filing status, what credits or deductions you claim on your tax return, all filers can file their federal return for free. The only gotcha here is you will need to pay for that state return, and that's an additional $9.95 per state. So what's new in 2021 with olt.com? The first thing is, is if you are looking to get that recovery rebate credit, that is if you haven't received a stimulus check in 2020, you can go ahead and file for that credit using olt.com. In addition, they've improved their icons to better direct users towards different features. However, the navigation is horrible. And even though the icons did help a bit, it's still just something that I really had to struggle and power through to get those tax returns done. All right, so let's talk about pricing with OLT.com. I mentioned that it is free to file your federal return regardless of your filing status plus that $9.95 for your state return. They also have a premium edition if you want to get access to customer service, audit support, and then import of prior year's data However, I'm, as I'm looking through the pricing package here, I just feel like this website is still from 2005. <laughs> and so my confidence in picking something like this paid pricing, this paid plan, just doesn't seem to be as good as something that I would find on H&R Block or TurboTax, for example, or even other bargain tax software like TaxHawk or TaxSlayer. So because you can file your federal return for free, no matter what your filing situation is, there's really not a whole lot of pricing plans, different pricing plans that you pick with OLT.com. Really what you're going to get with that premium package is just access to that audit support and the customer service line in case you have questions. But let's go ahead and jump into the actual tax software and I'm gonna show you why this thing just does not work for your taxes. Okay, so once you create an account, you're gonna have to put in your information and they have some icons here that kind of directs you to where you need to go, but you're going to fill out your general information, social security number, your name, birthday, occupation, and then click save and continue. All of this information that I'm showing in this tutorial is just fake <laughs> for the sake of the tutorial, but you'll wanna go ahead and put in your real address, city, state zip, all that good stuff. Then we can go back to account summary and then start my 2020 return. Then you can select your return type. Now, what I don't like about this is that Typically, you're just guided through a, a, a very easy user experience on other tax software, but you'd have to know exactly what a Form 1040 is or the 10, 1040NR, 1040X. So they do have general descriptions for them, but I'd rather them just say, oh, I'm a, I'm a, you're a W-2 income earner. This is exactly where you need to go. So before we can even get inside the main dashboard, we're already being prompted with the upgrade for the premium edition or the free edition, which is what we wanna continue with. You're going to see this left-hand menu navigation where you're gonna go through federal, state, review. Not quite sure what this extension is, but it looks like I can't even click on any of these buttons before getting into 
maybe some of this information. Let's see. I think what you're going to have to do is just click the save and continue return. And then we're going to go through your general information again. <laughs> uh, just make sure that's correct, I guess. And then go through and answer all of these yes, no questions. Looks like the little question mark will pop open a pop-up screen to tell you exactly what they mean. So you could find that helpful. That one looked a little wordy. One thing that I noticed off the bat is that it looks like OLT.com did update their software to reflect the latest tax laws, especially when it comes to reporting health insurance. So if you received a 10 95 form for the health insurance marketplace, then you can select yes to report it only if you received those forms. And if you didn't, then just click no and continue. Okay, then you're just going to go through your regular filing status questions. Uh, if you need help, it looks like they do have these pop up boxes. What filing status will you use? I'm not sure. Help me to decide. And then it looks like the pop-up is actually coming from irs.gov. So it's not even coming from olt.com. And they're going to direct you to the IRS, which can be uh, a little confusing to go through, especially because they're going to use tax jargon in this. And uh, if this is your first time filing taxes on your own or you just need more guidance, I don't think you're going to get this from OLT. Right, then you're going to answer some additional information. Uh, did you receive, sell, send, exchange, any financial interest in virtual currency? So I believe that's talking about cryptocurrency there. And it looks like on every single one of these little uh, question marks that I'm uh, clicking on, it's directing me back to the IRS. So I don't really like that because then I've got to go hunt for the information and you can already tell this is uh, very wordy to go through. And that's going to slow you down if you are trying to make this a fast and simple process. So we'll just go ahead and save and continue our return. Another thing that I mentioned earlier that I still see is that you can't skip around. They definitely have you go through every single question and use this purple save and continue button down at the bottom so that you can get to the next step. So you can't really skip around using this software. All right, so now we are actually getting into the income section of your return. So this is where you can list your different types of income. And it says the software will take you to the selected items. And then if you'd like to skip this page, go to directly to the income summary, click skip this step. I just want to see what this looks like because a lot of the top software players out there for tax returns like H&R Block do have these icons listed. And I think this is OLT's attempt at making this a bit user friendly and it just seems like they need a big overhaul of the inside of what the dashboard looks like anyways so it's small potatoes they're trying i don't think it's making that big of a difference but let's go ahead and just see what this looks like Unfortunately, with OLT, you will have to manually add in your forms. You will have to look at your W-2 and then look at the dashboard and then input all of this information down here at the bottom. So you'll have to be really diligent about triple checking to make sure that you've input the numbers correctly before hitting continue, before submitting your return. Okay, once you've added in your W-2, then you can go through and add any other types of forms that you might have, such as a 1099 INT form, 1099 DIV form. Those are pretty popular if you have investments or bank accounts in which you've earned interest. 
If you collected unemployment income in 2020, you'll want to input that information from Form 1099-G. Now, some common types of adjustments that you might experience include have having a health savings account or maybe that student loan interest deduction. So again, they're putting this in a nice icon format for you to look at. So it does help break things up visually, but I still feel like this is super clunky and it's very slow for me to get through each of the windows in each of the sections to file my return. Also, I noticed that I haven't received an update here in the left-hand corner of what my expected refund should be. So unless it's something that I input in my W-2 just isn't measuring up, I don't think this is right. Okay, so after you do those adjustments, add in those different forms, you're going to come up to the summary page and then you can click on the show more buttons just to show exactly what forms you may have. And then you can start those forms and go all the way down to done with adjustments. Then you can go through your different deductions. What I like about other software is that based off of what you've put in terms of income and then your other deductions, a lot of times they'll just tell you what they recommend, ver the standard versus the itemized. This is just having you uh, make that decision on your own, which I do like when I have some self-guidance when it comes to filing my taxes on my own. Here, you would have to know to choose the standard deduction. A lot of folks are going to fall into those child and dependent care expenses or the child tax credit. So if that's you, make sure you just click on this drop down and make sure that you fill out the form. Now I'm using this example as a single with no dependents, so we'll just go ahead and click done with credit summary and then take a look at the taxes summary here. So I know that we are in the federal section. This is where I feel like it gets a little confusing because this general taxes section <laughs> I've never seen before and it seems a little vague. Uh, maybe that's just because I don't know enough about tax code to understand what's going on there, but let's go ahead and click done with taxes. I can tell you though, as I'm going through each of these sections, I don't have a lot of confidence that I'm doing this right. It feels like I kind of have to guess to see that I'm inputting the correct forms and guessing whether or not I should fill out certain sections or not. So it's not very intuitive using this platform. All right. So once we hit the recovery re rebate credit, this is where you can input whether or not you received your stimulus check. Most people did receive a stimulus check. So you're going to click yes. If not, then you can report that and request that as a credit on your tax return. You're going to enter your amount and then you're going to hit up this list of other forms. So it's just a list of more forms that you have to go through and it's not clear whether or not you should actually start all of these different forms or if you just save and continue. Now, because I'm just a W-2 income earner and I'm just adding a very simple form into my tax return, I'm going to skip all of these. But if you didn't know to skip this, you could be wasting a lot of time just going through these forms unnecessarily and adding to your tax return experience, which is not fun. Okay, so it looked like the first time my W-2 did not get saved into the, the platform. So now the refund has updated to 2832. And then I'll go click on income summary. And then it's just gonna have me go through all the steps again. So I'm wondering if I can just go down to tax summary and here's where I last left off. So it looks like once you fill out each of the sections, it will let you jump back to those different subsections and then uh, fill out any information you may have missed or something that didn't get added on accident, like what happened earlier. It didn't look like it saved my information for whatever reason. So now we can see a nice federal tax summary, my total income, 
save and continue return. Okay, then after you fill in your federal information, you're going to fill in your state information. And typically that information is just going to be copied over from federal over to your state. And then you are going to go through all of these prompts. And again, you can see how the, the mouse just grays out. So I can't click on any of these sections until I actually go through each one of them. Once you have everything filled out, then you're going to come across the filing summary page ready to e-file. I just don't have any confidence in the way that this was set up that I was able to understand each of the sections. And that's why OLT.com does not make the list of recommendations for filing your tax software for 2020. So you really have to understand the tax code with OLT.com and just know what you're doing in regards to tax returns. We just found this extremely wordy, clunky, and they were using a lot of tax jargon. And for somebody who isn't a CPA and <laughs> didn't study a whole lot of accounting basics, you want to be able to get that from your tax software and OLT.com just does not cut it. If you're wanting bargain software, you're better off looking at things like Tax Slayer or Credit Karma Tax, which offers free packages and you get a better user experience. If you want a paid feature and you want, really want to go premium, then you're best looking at H&R Block or TurboTax. Don't forget, before you make a decision on where to file your tax return online. We cover a complete series of tax software reviews on the website, so be sure to check out all of those reviews at thecollegeinvestor.com.